Hi everyone, thank you very much for tuning in. This is your instructor Joy. Thank you very much for your continued support here in YouTube, also on my Patreon page. That means so much to me and I truly appreciate. Um, for those of you who, have, who haven't checked my Patreon page, um, I encourage you to, to check it out. The link is in the description below. I'll be posting the entire Vibrator course almost every week. And also, I'm going to try to put different videos depending on different level of playing. So, today I want to talk about important things that self-taught violinists would benefit from knowing. I get sometimes students who've been studying by themselves for a year or so, and they come to me. And then, of course, um, I do my best to correct it and stuff. And then, almost always, every mistake almost all mistakes can be corrected but i thought i would share with you a couple of things if you could keep in mind while teaching yourself you could save a lot of time energy and pain <laughs> physical pain as well as emotional so those are five things i thought i'll share with you that i find it would it would benefit a lot of self-taught balanced first posture so there's a lot of guidelines of how to hold the violin. Hold the violin, so and so, hold the bow, so and so, and then play that one. But um, you have to remember, we're not playing violin um, with a stiff arm. We are depending on how fast, how slow, or what kind of string you're playing. You're, we're constantly moving, right? So. Keep in mind that you shouldn't keep your both arms stiff, but try to see if we can move along. For example, if your bow is near the frog, which is this part, if you keep your violin far to left, your body has to your your upper body has to come all the way up, which result the upper the torso being twisted. You see that? So in this case, instead of bringing only right arm all the way up, bring your violin a little to the center so that both arms can work together while keeping your spine so much straight, which is very, very important. Um, whether you're playing in sitting or standing, make sure um, you're relaxed, but nothing gets twisted, and you should not squeeze your neck too hard either. Again, you're, you will end up having neck pain. Just, just, you don't have to know all the specifics of a violin playing per se, but use your common sense. See. Um, am I feeling a little pain and to, or is my body somewhat um, out of shape or twisted or overly crushed and then listen to your body what the body is saying yeah try to see if you can correct that second one is try to have a long-term goals um, we are all eager to play violin in the first couple of weeks we want to play and then we there's many um, great tunes available online, so we like to play fast and tune. Um, but remember, violin is not one of the easiest instruments, unfortunately. So even if you don't get it at first, second week, right away, do not give up. But see if this certain piece didn't work, then see if you can find a little easier pieces to work on that one. And then just keep in mind, it, violin playing, it takes a little more time in order to play uh, somewhat okay at least a couple of years so give yourself time a little more try rather than just a couple months right so don't give up just set yourself a little long-term goals like a year or two at least give a good try before you make big decision yeah just keep in mind it's one of those instruments that takes a little while but certainly if you stick to it if you put enough time on a regular basis you will be able to play nicely, but you have to have that kind of mindset. Three, violin maintenance or bow maintenance. A lot of um, a lot of Celta violinists are very focused on learning how to play tunes, which is great. But a very basic a care like a, you have to loosen the bow hair after you play. When you're not playing the violin, the bow hair should always stay loosened so that you can keep the stick nice and healthy so that this thin part does not snap or there's a lot of rotten dust on the violin make sure you clean here with a cloth 
because if you don't clean after every time the little sticky rotten gets stuck on the wood at some point you have to use chemical to clean those and chemical sometimes is not the best friend with a varnish when the varnish gets taken off that's again not the best part for the, not not the best condition for the wood yeah just clean it with a, a nice um, cotton cloth ev after every time just just make sure that your violin stays nice and clean just something like that or keep the violin away from the extreme heat or extreme cold away from the heater away from the window things like that do not leave the violin in the car and so on just use your common sense so whatever you wouldn't do to a child probably shouldn't happen to a violin either number four um, have a good sound expectation, have a good musical expect expectation by listening a great players, by listening professional violinists. A lot of self-taught violinists are very eager to share with others and they want to check out what other students are playing, which can be fun. But remember, as, long, as soon as it can be fun to hear other um, players from our level, it's also important to know what the highest level of playing should sound like, even if we're not there yet, but you have to have a certain sound expectation in your head so that you can go after. But if your goal is only to be about the same as your peer or same level, that may not be the ideal because then we will settle too quickly and that's not what that's not very good for long-term development so always listen to good players and good professional players and if you can listen to more players of uh, professional performance that would be even better another thing when it comes to sound production a lot of beginners or a lot of uh, self-taught violinists are very focused on playing correct notes and use very little bow that's um, common th um, things that I see try to use a little more fuller bow or a little more um, larger longer bows which will result producing nice sound because when it sounds nice it's fun for us and you will see after that one you will develop your own taste of what kind of sound and what kind of phrasing so therefore it's very very important to have a certain type certain sound expectation in our mind and then know how to produce beautiful tones five even if you set if you're set for learning violin, learning how to play violin all by yourself, it is, it is very, very um, good idea to have it checked at least once in a while. It does not have to be every day or anything like that, but just to make sure you're on the right track. All mistakes can be corrected, but if, you, if the wrong habits are left alone too long, it will take longer to correct it. So think about that so that af after a certain period of time, time, you want to get a professional advice, make sure you're on the right track with a posture, with a playing or picking a specific type of repertoires that works for you and not against you. And also certain type of techniques that requires a little more attention. Yeah. Um, a little, I understand there's a little investment there, but a little investment can save you long term, a big time, uh, physical pain and also you will save you a lot of just physical, like a, you can save a lot of time that could have wasted just correcting it, right? And also it's a good idea to gauge where you're at, to not just going alone, even though that's quite um, amazing, but just getting um, a professional opinion here and there that might save you a lot of time and energy and also bring you a little faster to where you want to be. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful and I wish all of you a wonderful violin playing and hope to see you again. Bye.